So I'm a believer in karma. And um, I think what you put out in the universe, you definitely get back. And this, that, remember I told, remember when we did the Kyle Rittenhouse video and he was crying and it made me smile. I said I was smiling all day. Like it made me really happy. Yeah. This rivals that. Okay. It's like right there. We did the video about the the, the Uber rider, the girl with the coughing all over and the cunt, basically. The cunt. Um, well, the cunt has a name. I'm still going to call her cunt, though. Um, uh, Arna Kamaya. She's 24 years old. And she turned herself in, finally. <laughs> She's facing up to, like, 20 years in prison. With a shit... Oh, with a shitload of fines. Um, yeah, so she's facing up to a, a total of uh, 20 years. She's being charged with battery of a transit employee, and that comes with a potential one year in prison and up to 10 grand. And um, uh, the first degree robbery charge could land her in prison for three to nine years and a sentence for her conspiracy to commit a crime. So remember when she's like, yo, if I had the ting, if I had the ting, remember that? Yeah. Not to mention her violation of California's strict mask mandate. <laughs> COVID <laughs> in the building. Stop. Stop the story right there for a sec. You just said California's strict mask mandate? That's yeah. what California is trying to... <laughs> So this is what they're putting. I'm not. That's what California is trying to say. That's what California is trying to say. This is what they're saying. All right, well, you know, what? we're gonna leave that alone for now. Let's right. leave that. So our bond is set at about seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> nice. I, I love it. Oh, I think mamas. I, I think I just got a bit of a stiffy when I read that story. Oh, mamas. that's that was unnecessary. I'm so happy. I'm so happy because you know what this tells people? All you dumbass people out there that think you can go viral for treating people like shit, it tells you that there's consequences for your actions. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Beautiful. Love it. Big smile. Hi, hi, hi guy. Both very happy. What are your thoughts? There's been so many that I, I was watching actually a few other videos today that were talking about this and they showed like other videos that like I had never seen. Like, I don't know if you have seen them, but she did like her own post for her for from her own Instagram page, I guess, trying to explain it from the other side or whatever. So or something. But listen, I watched all the videos and it didn't help to clarify or make her seem like she was the victim or or anything like that at any point because at the end of the day when she got in the man asked her to put on a mask and she said no so you know there's that button there i you know what this is a thing when you have uh toxic bitches this is a thing when you have toxic bitches and they give off this energy because you see her two friends that were with her were on the same energy they weren't that's why they got charged too because they weren't sitting there like you know no, you should calm down. Why are you taking off his mask? They're just like, yeah, you know, da -da 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 -da, sit, staying off these stuff. And that type of energy is what females push forth when they know that men can't retaliate. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Some females, get, yeah. Some, the toxic, the toxic bitches. That's what I'm we talking about. We are being about. very specific. That's true. This is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about the toxic bitches who go out there and they feel like, you know what I mean, they can do whatever they want and they're not going to catch no backlash from a man. So it, it gives them that extra courage to talk about, you know, I got the tang on me, the tang, tang on me, and all mamas, you know what I mean? For me, it's funny how this girl was able to turn from from, from victim to, to, to hardcore gangster by the time she got home. So it's just uh, a lot of things from this story are just really backwards. The fact that she's getting charged, great, great. But there's so many other things that need to be highlighted just about women in general and them needing to understand that if you step up like a man, sometimes you might get dealt with. Luckily, in this case, physically she didn't get dealt with, but legally she's getting dealt with. Which so is perfect. It's going to happen either way. Which is which is perfect. Um, right. Yo, Google this girl, man. Google her, YouTube her. There's a lot of backstories about her. I'm not really into uh, character bashing, so I won't. Um, I'll just stick with, um, uh, you know, what we've seen with our own two eyes because there's other stories, like I said, about her, but how, how can it be verified? But if any of this stuff is true, Toxic Dre really captures, embodies 
her spirit, her energy. And hopefully, this is a lesson for her and her band of coyotes. And, you know, they reform and they come out to be productive members of society. Um, So, yeah, again, super happy. Very, very pleased to see this. And, um, yes, this is a teachable moment. Toxic bitches. And uh, we use that word for really just for what it is. You, you you know who you are. Women, you know who we're talking about. Toxic bitches, you know we're talking to you. You you know who you are. Let this be a teachable moment to you, okay? Your actions have consequences. Sometimes they're dealt with immediately in the form of, well, violence. And sometimes they're dealt with legally. Case in point. All right? Karma people. Goes around, comes around. Universal law. <laughs> Viewing public. Are you as happy as we are? I'm so... This should be a holiday. I shouldn't have worked today. We should all, we should all get the day off next year on this day. Um, Wait a second. It is a holiday. St. Patty's Day. But... I was just about to say. I was just about to say. <laughs> is it going to trump St. Patty's Day? Maybe. I mean, it's definitely a reason to get twisted with all sensitivity. But viewing public, what are your thoughts here, man? Really, are you happy? Like, did did she have... Can you justify her actions at all? Are they being too harsh with the sentencing? Up to 20 years? $10,000? I don't think they're being too harsh. I don't think they're being too harsh at all. I already said, man, we're in a pandemic right now. So, unfortunately, whether you want to accept it or not, some people are going to look at saliva like a bullet out of a gun. So, you understand what it is. You just try to commit attempted murder. So, hey. Again. So happy. Oh, mamas. Oh, mamas. <laughs> oh, mamas. I wonder if, trying to commit attempted murder. Oh, mamas. I wonder if mamas is going to visit her while she's locked up in the bang. Ooh. I wonder if that dumbass boyfriend is going to is gonna continue to teach her how to protect herself because that, that clearly isn't working out for her. So yeah, well. I, I wonder if she broke up with him because clearly he gives really bad advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On mamas. You know what? Another thing that I heard that somebody said that I had to agree with too. That's her boyfriend is she doesn't he must be broke. He's oh, gotta 100%. be broke. Because ain't no ain't no nigga out here with money telling you to go fight everybody and anybody that steps against you because they got shit to lose. Yeah. So yeah, 100%. That, that was a good point that somebody made. That's a still. great point. <laughs> and while she's locked up, I'm pretty sure she's gonna be working on her rap album. So that's gonna be something. Uh right. two guys doing a podcast podcast. Deuces. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Yo, 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 Chris, 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 we got to 200 subscribers, Finally. man. Finally. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want to stop there. We have a new goal. The new goal is 500 subscribers. So what I need you to do, I need you to like these videos over here. I need you to subscribe right here, man. Two guys doing the podcast podcast, man. And um, one thing that you always, not always, but you bring up from time to time is the Drake era. And you, you know, you reference uh, Charlemagne, Drake era over. And Charlemagne had to admit, obviously, it's not. Uh, he was on his breakfast uh, club program. I'm saying it like it's a little thing. It's a big deal. And uh, <laughs> his, little, his little breakfast club program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a side little, of eggs. A little, little tiny thing. <laughs> it's just a, it's a side of eggs. And uh, he goes, first off, congrats to Drake. He basically said Drake is cheating. And uh, he's like, don't let the haircut and the head fool you. Aubrey Graham is a demon uh, who doesn't play fair. He cheated. I can't prove it. And this might be pure hate, and I'm not standing on nothing with this. I just think he cheated. This guy was on a on a huge backtrack, like a huge moonwalk, like trying to get out of what he said. Because first he said that he never actually said that the Drake era was over. What he said was that he just... I watched both of the interviews, so let me let me tell you this, Sean. When you ask a question, because he said that he asked the question, he said, is the Drake era over? When you ask that question and you follow it up by a bunch of stats trying to make it seem like the Drake era is over... Yeah. <laughs> Talking about how little baby does this and how when they come out it's this and and dub baby is doing that and and when you follow up your own question with that 
you, it shows where you stand on that. You exactly. just, You're answering your, question, your own question. Yeah, you yeah. didn't leave it open. You didn't leave it open. So so you did say that the Drake era was over, and you were insinuating that it was because Little Baby was doing what he was doing, and Roddy Rich was doing what they were doing and all that stuff. So you did. And then when you came back and, you, and Drake went one, two, three, you know, you struggled to congratulate the man. You struggled so hard to congratulate him because you... you DJ Envy and Angela Lee almost forced him to make his first point to congratulate Drake. It was not going to be his first point. Then he wanted to go off and make a point about how, you know, certified lover boy now has to be undeniable. Like, it has to be the great, like, slowly, subliminally saying the same thing, putting more pressure on Drake, like Drake feels the pressure already. Like he's I don't think Drake really feels the pressure. Like uh, Charlemagne is trying to insert that narrative in the conversation. He's trying to make his Drake fans feel like Charlemagne I didn't I didn't think about it that way. He's right. This does have to be a classic. And if it's not, we ain't messing with Drake anymore. Listen to me. A Drake fan is like a Nicki Minaj fan is like a Beyonce fan, okay? They're not like an Eminem fan. They're not fans, they're stands. Drake can put out absolutely anything. They are going to love it. Let's say Certified Lover Boy doesn't do as well as some of the other Drake albums. He has now opened the door to reopen the conversation when this, if this does happen, to say, see? I told you I so. told you. All right. He's not selling as much as he used to sell. So he, he he thinks he's smart. He thinks he's smart. It's okay to set those traps. But the thing about it is, is you also have to be able to admit when you're wrong. Right. You, like you just said, like, Charlotte, uh, excuse me, um, Envy and Angela Yee had to poke and prod him to even admit that the error wasn't. No, just admit you were wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Like, I'm wrong like 10 times a day. I might be right, right. twice if I'm lucky. Every time Drake comes up, in a conversation, it might be a slight congratulations, but then it's a bunch of, oh, well, this didn't happen, or this might happen, or this other artist is doing this, he's not doing this, I'm noticing that. So, you know what it is? Like, just just admit it. I'm with you. Like, tell me. Come but, on. But look, come on, man. but look, you said every time Drake's name comes up in the conversation. Now, let's talk about the conversation that's being had. Right now, just in circles, anywhere in the globe, online, Whose name do you think is popping up more in just random urban hip hop conversations, Drake or Charlemagne? Oh well, Drake. Okay, about. so Charlemagne is a cultural critic, and in order for Charlemagne to remain to be, you know, viable, to remain to be profitable, to basically sustain his his job, really, let's just call it what he is, he needs to be talked about. So why wouldn't he talk about the most talked about? And especially if he's talking about the most talked about and he's going against the grain, if everybody's right. saying he's great and, oh, no, I'm going to. You're right. You're right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, again, this is, this is why I say I, I believe it's hate, but it could be. It probably is. Smart. But I also think it's just it's, it's strategy as well. You know what I mean? Charlotte, he, and besides, this is how he came up. He came up talking shit. You know, yeah. so who knows? Maybe when COVID is all done and everybody's taking their vaccine and whatnot and Drake uh Drake's back on tour and maybe Drake will send Charlemagne some more bottles and they'll be friends again because <laughs> let's not let's not forget I don't think this isn't a two-way street Charlemagne gets to talk about Drake right and Charlemagne gets the bubble because everybody's now going to talk about Charlemagne but when Charlemagne talks about Drake and everybody's talking about Charlemagne talking about Drake well, guess whose name is in that conversation? Drake. Right, right. Drake bubbles up too. So it's a, you know what I mean? It's a give and take, right? So and then he gets to drop songs like "What's Next," and then just this is what I'm saying. Just a, so direct, like, just a direct shot at all the critics. But like, it, it, it can work. Like, if it's if it's an even playing field, it could work. If it's fair, it could work. If you don't cross any real lines, it could work. We can go at it all day long. If we could both benefit from it, it could work. But viewing public, uh, what are your thoughts here? Is Charlemagne just a hater? Or is he a genius? Is he a bit of both? Um, certified Lover Boy, does it have to be a classic? Does it have to be the one? Drake already said that people ain't going to like it until later on. 
he said that. He said that people will not like until later. So Drake setting the bar. All strategy, man. Both of these people. <laughs> both of these. They're both right now chilling. Yeah, like try to play, try to play chess against each other. Like right. Um, leave in the comments, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Deuces. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Yo, 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 Chris, 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 we got to 200 subscribers, Finally. man. Finally. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want to stop there. We have a new goal. The new goal is 500 subscribers. So what I need you to do, I need you to like these videos over here. I need you to subscribe right here, man. Two guys doing the podcast podcast, man. Have I ever told you I'm never going to America? <laughs> So, um, uh, eight dead in Atlanta spa shooting uh, with fears of uh, anti-Asian bias. So, this guy uh, went into massage parlors and uh, he just started killing people, right? He's killing people, offing them. And he happened to, uh, six of them happened to be Asian women. And apparently he was on his way to Florida um, uh, to go to, I guess, some like kind of porn industry uh, party to, I guess, kill some more people. I, I don't know how his parents found out, but his parents were the ones that reported him ultimately. Parents the reported police. him. That's it. But the, the weird thing is, is he, he the guy said that he, he's a sex addict. And the only way for him to get over his addiction is to basically eliminate the temptation. Right, right. So These massage parlors were, was, his, was his addiction and he needed to terminate the addiction or the, the call. Yeah, and, and you know what I don't understand? How could he be anti-Asian if he's been going to these massage parlors getting off? Like, he is... If I'm racist, I don't even... My dick ain't gonna get hard if it's near you. You know what I mean? I hate you. He's going to these massage parlors getting... How is he racist? His his story is fucked up. Like, I need to... It's a mess up. It's a mess up. It's a 21-year-old. He's 21. There you go. The reason why this story got so big is because people automatically made it a racist thing where he just attacked them strictly because they were they were Asian. You know what I mean? And I don't know what his attraction was, if it was strictly Asian women, or if it just so happened that these massage parlors that he went to had Asian women working in them. I don't know what the difference is, and that's why it's hard for me to determine whether or not this is a racist act or not. The way it looks from surface is it doesn't look like it was just him targeting any Asian, because I feel like if it was racist, he would have targeted any Asian. It would have been the Asians in a side of a massage parlor that he used to go to. Yes. He didn't hate them. What he hated was his addiction, according to him. He hated his addiction, and he was trying to get rid of that, and these people were in the way because they were so good at their jobs. So. Right. If it was, I'm not Asian, so I, I can't sit here and tell Asian people how to feel. All I can right. do, and I've never met this person, obviously, so all I could do is just go with the information that, that's been given to me, and it doesn't it doesn't read that way. All this race shit, all this, all this turmoil, division among the world has people more focused on the words inside of a hotline than the fact that the man killed eight people. The, the, the actual story is being pushed to the side because people want to make it so much about race. It's the, the race factor in this to people is more important than the fact that there's eight people dead. What about the people that weren't Asian that he killed? Right. We ain't even talking about them. Ha! They're not even factored into the story when people talk about it. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the media plays a big part of, of that. The, the, the outlet that you know reported on the story they created the headline and they create the they're the ones writing the paper you know what i mean right. they, they so they kind of create the narrative um but again the person who did the crime he is not corroborating the headline he is saying i'm a sex addict and the only way for me to get over my addiction is to eliminate the people who were feeding my addiction he didn't say anything about i don't like chinese people i don't like asians i don't like he didn't say anything of that he just said he had a problem with sex so right. how did they the media or the people reporting on the story how could they hear that and then say let's make this the headline right so that furthers your point so at the end of the day this is a very clear example that if you just look at the hot, the hot, I guess like the hot take, the headline, 
and you just don't do a little bit more reading, you're not even going to know the half truth. You just you just get in the lie. Because in the article you sent me, anti-Asian. Look, look, this is the article. This is the New York Times. Anti-Asian in the in the headline of the New York Times. In the same article, if you just read, you will hear what the man who committed the crime said. Sex addict had nothing to do with Asian. Why would the New York Times choose to use that as the headline? I was just on Instagram. I seen about five or six pages put on their story this this tweet of this lady who was commenting on it, and that was the focus too, saying it was uh it was that we need to protect Asians from from hate, which I don't disagree with. Of course you not. Gotta protect, especially during COVID, I understand. We've got to protect 100%. them because people are being attacked un, un, unjustly. Well, look, viewing public, uh, we've talked enough about it. What say you? What are your thoughts? Um, uh, was this guy racist? Do you buy his story that... Because, you know, at the end of the day, he could be lying, right? I mean, the, he's 20... He's he could have... Chris, he could have killed a million... There's so many other Asians just on his way to, of the, course, to the parlor. Of course, of course. This, I'm, just, I'm giving both sides. I'm okay. giving both sides. At the end right, of the day, right. we're not experts, <laughs> so you know what I mean. At the end of the day, he could be lying. Um, so, what are your thoughts here, man? Um, also, speak to speak to the media, like New York Times. This is this is irresponsible. New York Times, this yeah. is irresponsible. Leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Two guys doing a podcast. Podcast deuces, and don't judge me the way I title this video. Deuces again. <laughs> I don't even know what the title's gonna be. I don't even know. This is, this is gonna be wild, though. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching that video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Yo, 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 Chris, Chris, Chris. We got to 200 subscribers, Finally. man. Finally. You know what I'm saying? But we don't want to stop there. We have a new goal. The new goal is 500 subscribers. So what I need you to do, I need you to like these videos over here. I need you to subscribe right here, man. Two guys doing the podcast, podcast, man.